is deep to return. Leary third in the ACC. Here's the kick and it's over the head of Leary. There'll be no return and Georgia Tech with Haynes King starts first and 10 at its 25. Jack Jackets are averaging 434 yards a ball game of offense 265 passing and just under 30 points and Haynes King is third in passing yardage and you see the 17 TDs leads the conference. I think he's a really good football player. He's tough. He's a threat with his legs. You see what he did last week against BC. He's a good accurate thrower will stand in the pocket. I think the only thing I would say is at times Wes he's tried to do a little bit too much. Tight end three receivers Haynes in the backfield Carolina pressures there's a throw that's Dylan Leonard. So the two tight end set with Benson and Dylan Leonard who's a finalist for the Campbell Trophy. Get Georgia Tech started on nine yard game. And one of the things Georgia Tech really wants to do is just stay on schedule offensively it doesn't mean you're going to run the football on first down quick game on first down I think is something we could see to just stay out of some of these third and longs where Carolina is so good. That's the freshman Singleton in motion. This is Jamal Haynes and first guy was power Eccles to hit him at the 36. Haynes will dig out another yard for a Georgia Tech first down. And Jamal Haynes comes into the ball game ninth in the ACC in yards rushing per game. But he's got four touchdowns as well a converted wide receiver from just up 85 at Loganville Georgia played for a terrific program at Grayson High School. Here is King rolling to the right and Haynes is going to get two maybe three and the Tar Heels gang tackle is led by Cayman Rucker who has been terrific for Gene Chiswick. Tommy Thigpen and Charlton Warren on the defensive side. Yeah, he's been outstanding and you see what Georgia Tech's trying to do there you have a shift in a motion and then it's. You know, basically a version of option football but Carolina through all of that disguise does a good job of being in place. Little tempo against the Tar Heels. King in trouble. Des Evans almost got him now he reroutes shakes another guy keeps his feet and he will get to the thirty nine which was the line of scrimmage. Haynes King was dead to rights three times Tim. You're the quarterback. You tell me how you have that at many lines. Well listen he's exhausted right now. I can tell you that he starts to his right. He didn't like it. He comes off of it and that's actually a great feel in the pocket to get away from Evans and then you know really wasn't able to find anybody things pretty well covered down the field and one thing I can tell you right now communicating the play to your offense after that yeah. a lot of deep breaths. So King now third down and eight for Georgia Tech. Quick snap, low throw to Jamal Haynes. It is ruled incomplete. Carolina smartly chased him. Giovanni Biggers was the closest Tar Heel, and uh oh, Haynes King a little wobbly. And West, you know, I'm joking about you know, kind of losing your breath, but it's hard to be accurate as a passer when that happens. And what's really strange there for Haynes King. Is that there was no contact whatsoever. But Haynes King definitely had something bothering him, what looked like on his right ankle area after that throw. First punt of the night for David Shanahan. Elijah Huzzy, a fair catch in Carolina, will scrimmage around its 25. There's an injured Georgia Tech player on the play. 37 yard punt from the Irishman Shanahan. And just underway in Atlanta. Georgia Tech ran five plays and punted. Tar Heels are next. Right over to the huddle, avoided the trainers and sat down with his quarterback's coach, Chris Wenke, and got right to work. The trainer did eventually come over. He felt around that right ankle cap area, but Haynes King shrugged him off, sent him away. When we talked to offensive coordinator Buster Faulkner earlier this week, I asked him his favorite characteristic of King, and he said toughness. It's going to take a lot for him to be out of this game, guys. Proved it on the opening snap. And here's Amarian Hampton with 10 yards on his first carry of the night. Jalen King the stop in the secondary. And Tim, they play in the script for us so far. Well, they want to run the football. First play, Georgia Tech brings pressure. Carolina doesn't care. They hand it off to Hampton and rips a 10 yard run. And here's another one, and Hampton breaking near the 50 yard line. Another run, 14 this time. So 24 on the first two carries of the night for Amarian Hampton. Of Clayton, North Carolina. And just based on what we've seen the first two runs, would not be surprised to see 
Georgia Tech's going to start to squeeze this front down, Wes. Yep, and there goes six yards before Micaiah Scott, the transfer from South Carolina, makes the tackle for the Jackets. And even on a run there, the third run of the game, looked like it was bottled up. Looked like a six yard run, Wes. Carolina's playing two by two here as well. Which is typically what a pass formation. There's yeah. the tight end Copenhaver from Roswell, Georgia, in motion. May's first throw of the night. Drake up in the pocket. Crossing route that J.J. Jones got hit at the Georgia Tech 29 yard line by Amari Harvey. By the way, the injured Georgia Tech player was K.J. Wallace on that punt return a moment ago. But Carolina's already closing in on Georgia Tech's red zone. Mays for 17 yards to Jones. And here is Hampton again, shredding two tacklers and falling close to another first down. Eford, the linebacker. Remember, he was involved with Mawala on the fumble of Cheney at the end of the Miami game, makes the play. Yeah, we've seen a lot of this already. You see 63, Montalist does a good job of getting up to the second level. Copenhager coming through there and digging out, and basically a hat for a hat, and Hampton's just too big to allow to get rolling into the second level. And Hampton will wheel toward the 11. And North Carolina has thrown it once and been deliberate in the run. Six carries for Amari and Hampton. Here is a seventh straight ahead, and Georgia Tech will rally just a two yard game there. Zeke Biggers at 333 pounds, a North Carolinian, makes the tackle of the Tar Heel back. This felt like just coming out of the corner swinging west, didn't it? I mean, yep. I barely catch, would barely catch our breath you know, with how they're running the football with tempo. Well, and that's it. Chip Lindsey adding the tempo to what Mac Brown talked about Monday. And I'm sure it's been re emphasized all week. British Brooks has checked in to spell Hampton. McCollum, the Georgia Tech transfer, has gone slot right for May. Here's Drake, pumps. Now he'll move to his right. Flag thrown on the play. May will eventually throw it out of bounds. It's ruled incomplete, I believe. Amari Harvey was the defender pressuring May. Mike Roach is tonight's referee. There are a pair of flags. Was Drake May over the line of scrimmage? I think we're going to get an illegal forward pass as well as a hold. Okay. On Carolina. Now, be interested to see if Drake had stepped out of bounds prior to actually throwing the football. Well, there's the illegal forward pass. And that comes with a loss of down as well, right? There are two fouls on the play, both on the offense. Holding offense number 75, the penalties decline. Illegal forward pass, offense number 10, throwing a pass beyond the line of scrimmage. The loss of down, five yard penalty, the plays under further review. All right. So May's working to his right, and you know, as he escapes outside the pocket here, that little grab was the penalty would still be in play. And then yeah, Drake lets go of that football. Now his entire body has to be across where the ball was. Now that looks like he's. There's a chance that his right foot there's a there's a chance that his right foot was back but but behind where the ball came out. I mean So Mike Roach will get on the headset here. And no surprise that's the penalty Georgia Tech took with the loss of down and the red zone possession here for Carolina on the opening drive. So the 10 yard line's the line of scrimmage. And so he's he's, he's well past it. Yard. And so after further review the ruling on the field stands. It's an illegal forward pass to be third down. It's actually a nice job of the officials because originally the official down on the, the near sideline, he's looking where Drake May is and like, is he out of bounds? He's also looking at the quarterback in terms of, you know, is he going to get hit near the boundary? And it's the official on the far side 
that's standing on the line of scrimmage that sees it. And listen, that's a huge penalty because now with this pointless the way this drive has gone for Georgia Tech, you have third and long, you have a chance to hold Carolina to a field goal. McCollum and Walker here to the near side. Carolina has Bryson Nesbitt and J.J. Jones to the top. That's McCollum in motion. Trips to the left. Tech brings four. May to the end zone. Nesbitt. Did he hold on? He did. Touchdown Carolina and Bryson Nesbitt. If you want to know why everyone talks about Drake May is such a big time prospect stuff like that tight window throw in the red zone protect the receiver because he's in traffic keep him low he's able to avoid it hold on to the football that's perfect 54th career touchdown pass for Drake May and Carolina goes 75 yards in eight plays on the opening drive Noah Burnett to add the point And is seven nothing now. Carolina to get the win, right? Yeah. yeah. Big plays. No question. Boyd to kick it away. Leary deep for the Jackets, who find themselves trailing seven to nothing. And nine yards through. Jackets will scrimmage from the 25 and Haynes King. Oh, okay. A little soft jog and back and forth, and gives head athletic trainer Mark Smith the green light. And here he comes. Virginia had success Tim running the ball slowing things down on Carolina last week that felt really fast for the Tar Heels to get themselves to a seven nothing lead yeah, and I think they kind of needed to to get their footing and maybe get settled in this game as well play fake by King trying to launch now he'll bail tried to throw it back to Leonard as he left the pocket threw it behind him incomplete I like it. look I know not everything's perfect. I like the poise and I like the presence of this number 10 from Longview, Texas. I, I, there, there's just a good feel and sense in the pocket. He actually makes a really nice play here. There's nothing downfield. He escapes. Really, if his tight end, Leonard, will just sit there because what's happening is he's escaping. The defender's going to come with him, but he runs with the quarterback and not able to connect. Handoff will go to Haynes and Jamal almost made. Stick lane miss. He got just enough of Haynes or else it was getting ready to be one on one with Marcus Allen in the secondary of Carolina. Now, now here's the thing for Georgia Tech. You can't live in these situations where it's third and seven or more just because the pass rush for Carolina is really good. This is not the environment you want to be living in. Cardinals bringing four King in the pocket again back foot throw and a catch a sliding grab by Malik Rutherford. That's a great job of Rutherford because the officials in the way of the football have been able to find it. Georgia Tech quickly hands to Haynes on first down. Right in front of the Jackets bench. Banged out of bounds. There's a flag in the backfield at the 33. Holding offense, number 67. Ten yard penalty, first down. Joe Fusel guilty of the hold. Back to that third down completion, Wes. This is really well done by King. Some pressure in his face, got to drift a little bit. You said it is his back foot, but you know it's not a real down the field throw. So he's able to get enough on it, and then just nice concentration by Rutherford because the umpire standing in the middle there and a shield the football. Yeah, Mike Prowl in the firing line, and now after the penalty, Trey Cooley has checked in. First time we've seen the Louisville transfer. Georgia Tech's third leading rusher. Here's Cooley. Runs hard and clears the 30 out to about the 33. It'll still be second down and very long. Tackle made by Travis Shaw. Big number four. And Gene Chiswick talked about early tonight getting more linemen in on the defensive side. And they have depth there, so they can roll guys through, and they've gotten a lot of production out of guys that aren't starters. Here's the second down throw. Kane rips one again. And 
And that is Leary, I think, holding on in traffic. Elijah Huzzy with the quick stop on Christian Leary. So here's third and eight for Georgia Tech, who missed earlier tonight. That makes them eight of their last 25 on third down. King dumps it underneath. And whoa, what a collision. At the 46, maybe the 47 yard line, a big time collision. Cooley caught that. And Amari Gaynor dropped the hammer on Cooley, who I think wants to come out of the ball game, but cannot come out of the game. ESPN Analytics tells us fourth and two here. Is it go? Well, and I think maybe for Brent Key, with the way he saw Carolina run the football on him the first drive, if he feels like he has to steal a possession. Haynes does get in the ball game. Cooley out. They're going to hand it to Haynes, and I think he got tripped up. Carolina got him at the 46 and a half. Stick Lane, who started his college career down the street at Georgia State, fires into the box to take Haynes down, and Tar Heels are going to get it on downs here, Tim. Well, Stick Lane comes flying downhill. To make this play. I mean, he's a he was really listed as a safety. I mean, here's Stick Lane right here. Things kind of get clogged up inside, but watch how just downhill he plays this, sees it, and then goes and meets Haynes in the backfield. And that wasn't even close to picking up the first down. Carolina out over the football quickly in Georgia Tech territory at the 46 yard line. You thinking shot play here, Tim? Honestly, I'm thinking run the football. I mean, you were getting nearly 10 a clip last time. Here is Hampton. He's getting started left side. He's got six and maybe nine on first down before Miles Sims shows him out. You know, Wes, what I think, and I don't know if this is how Chip Lindsay's going to call it, but when you're punching the way they're punching in the run game, you keep calling it. Like, prove to me that you can stop it because the safest thing you can do as an offense is obviously hand the football off. Brooks spells Hampton here on second and short. They're going to flip it and come to the near side and turn in the corner is the former jacket Nate McCollum. And I think McCollum is going to be just short of the first down and the crowd here reintroduces themselves to McCollum with a chorus of boos. He started at Dutchtown High School. Here in Atlanta at 60 catches a year ago, but transferred in the portal. And here's Brooks bouncing off for the first down and inside the 30 yard line of Georgia Tech. It's just movement up front. I mean, having the hat. And then you have these big physical backs for Carolina. It's hard to get them down. May on the perimeter. McCollum again. Crashing through toward the 21. And Tempo is, or beg your pardon, Jones five, not McCollum six. And Tempo is Chip Lindsey's best friend here. Uh, listen, Tempo's a problem, and it's, it's, it's really working against Georgia Tech defensively. Even the defensive linemen already slow getting in their stances. May will keep it to his right. Drake on the perimeter, he will slide down. First and 10 coming. Well. So Carolina, who has run it ten times and thrown it four. Hampton comes back in the ball game. The Tar Heels already have 77 yards of rushing, Tim, on their second possession. And Amari and Hampton returns. So handing the ball right side, and Biggers had him and lost him, and Hampton breaks free. Touchdown, Carolina. Zeke Biggers had him dead to rights at the 20. Zeke Biggers originally makes a great play. He's in the backfield on Hampton. And you know, one of the things we've talked with Georgia Tech quite a bit about is effort to the football. Listen, when Biggers has him wrapped up, he needs 10 of his buddies to get there and help him out because Hampton, at 220 pounds, it's hard to get down with one guy. 72 yards on eight carries, and now Amari and Hampton's ninth touchdown of the year. Through two possessions, it has been a heavy dose of Amari and Hampton in the Carolina run game, a sprinkling of Drake May throwing the ball. But look at this thing. 
So Drake May is usually the story, but how about these physical backs for Carolina tonight? It's been all on Mark. Feels like Amari Hampton's got more than 72 on eight carries, doesn't it? I mean, it does because they're getting so many per clip. I mean, nine yards per carry. Like, I haven't seen any evidence of it slowing down based on what we've seen from Georgia Tech defensively. Liam Boyd will kick it away. Christian Leary waits. Boyd going to hang this high. Leary will let it bounce halfway back. Pre-game, here's Brent Key with a message to his team. What's up, guys? Hey, simple Boyd. night. Simple. Just do your job. Do your job. From the start to the finish, four quarters, 60 minutes, do your damn job. Do it as hard as you can, do it as fast as you can. Offense. Control the line of scrimmage. Don't wait for a knockout punch. Here's King on first down, eludes Atkinson's pressure. Haynes King will stretch it out and get the first down. A little downshift by Will Hardy as King got to the sideline. He didn't want to risk adding 15 to it. Haynes King gets Georgia Tech a first down on a 10 yard run. And I think Georgia Tech needs plays like that out of King to spark them. His mobility is such an asset for them, and I think it's something that can help them create big plays. Four minutes in this first quarter left. Here's Jamal Haynes, and boy, what a tackle by Seth Gray. Gray comes in leading Carolina with 70 tackles, 28 in the last two, Tim. Yeah, 18 last week, and he just does a nice job of, of playing downhill. You see 33 just flies through there, and Joe Fusel, who's called for a hold earlier, nearly tried to tackle him on his way, but he's playing with too much speed. So Mel Kuyper's got Cedric Gray as a top 10 off-ball linebacking prospect. Here's a throw, nice catch on the front. Look at Rutherford shake Gray and get the first down. Now you see me, now you don't from Malik Rutherford. And you're breaking down Cedric Gray, you're just not breaking down a guy. And I'm telling you what, they just the, the quickness, ball in their hands, the Georgia Tech receivers are very dangerous. That's Singleton, the rookie in motion. King, the play fake. Down the seam and overthrows Rutherford. Boy, had a choice too. Looked like Blaylock was also a potential target. Yeah, I think that's the right read, though. He's, he's working a post from his left side, and then he's got Rutherford on the deep cross. And look, Rutherford, for as fun as he is to watch because of his quickness, he is just five foot nine, but he's wide open on this over route. And King just overshoots him. There's Leary in the orbit. Here's Dante Smith returning to the lineup for Georgia Tech. And he'll break the 50 to the Tar Heel 49 yard line. This is his first action since South John Carolina Chapman. State for the uh, fifth year senior from Spring Hill, Tennessee. On the play. It's third down and 48th six. 48th career MVP. game for Dante Smith. So he's welcomed back into the lineup with Cooley and Haynes as ball carriers in Brent Key's offense. And Wes, it feels weird saying this, but at third and six, just based on how they haven't been able to stop the run. And having to extend drives offensively would not be surprised if it comes to fourth down if they go for it again. They're going to hand it to Smith. He'll sweep to the right. Dante Smith, the first down, banged out of bounds into the Carolina bench at the Tar Heel 38 by Elijah Huzzy. So a little boost in the run game from Dante Smith with his return. Yeah, he's a guy that's got good speed, but he's good at breaking tackles. And this one on the jet sweep, Atkinson's just not blocked, and then too much speed even for Gray to the outside. So first and 10, Georgia Tech, their best possession of the night. Carolina 39. In motion goes Avery Boyd. Here's Smith trying to find a crack in the wall. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. Jabari Ritzy made the play for the Tar Heels. Carolina makes some defensive line substitutions, one of them being Ritzy. Haynes is returned to replace Smith. And Singleton and Boyd here to the near side. Now they're going to hand it to Haynes, and he 
Buffalo down at the 35. Buster Faulkner's doing all he can to kind of long drives keep Carolina over there. Well, and you know we've seen a lot of shifts and motions. You know, doing anything to find a gap in the run game or just create a little confusion. Here is Kane from the pocket and got Rutherford and a big lick. That's Hussey. What a terrific transfer Elijah Hussey's been in the Carolina secondary. And that's a great job of just running over the top of traffic because they're trying to set a pick on the shallow cross. And Hussey getting over the top does a nice job of it. And I would say this. Because they went fast, they found themselves in a position now where you can't take the quarter and talk about what you want to do on fourth down. But I do think going for it based on how you haven't been able to stop them makes sense. Down 14 nothing. Here's King. Carolina bringing the house. King jump pass. Tried to throw it on the perimeter. Georgia Tech wanted a flag. Didn't get it. Carolina gets it on downs again with Marcus Allen defending Malik Rutherford. And pressure on King and he really wasn't able to deliver a good throw. I just think the ending there was you after you got the first down on the Dante Smith run. Because you were going to have the corner to the quarter to talk about the decision. See, Hayes King obviously something bothered his. Oh, it looks like his hand, his left hand gets stuck in Tamari Fox's helmet. Bent back awkwardly. This felt rushed to me at the end of the quarter. Ten plays. They give it away on downs. Carolina off its 32. No surprise, Hampton for five on first down. And that will be the final play of the opening period. Well, Georgia Tech's third possession. This success is something. And now, before the ball is snapped, we got procedure on Carolina. Michael Prowl, the umpire, throwing the flag. Fun start. Offense, number 63. It's a five-yard penalty, second down. Modelus, the guard. 35th start tonight for Ed out of Apopka, Florida. You know, they're going to have a shift in a motion. i got to be honest. I didn't see Montelus move. I thought Corey Gaynor's left arm moving. Oh, he was touching. Was maybe. Was he doing some sort of block cadence here? Here's the penalty and the yardage and Hampton to carry and he'll get the five back and one more. So it'll be second and nine. Horace Lockett. Good looking redshirt freshman from Atlanta. There's Horace. 341 pounds. It's a big man now. Marco Coleman. There he is in the glasses. One of Georgia Tech's all time greats. Member of that 90 national championship team coaches their defensive line. Third and nine. Pressure coming from the perimeter on May. Down the seam, Nesbitt. Into Georgia Tech territory at the 32 goes Bryson Nesbitt. Listed as a tight end at 6'5, 235. Holding offense number 61. It's a 10 yard penalty. Wow. The throw will be taken away of 34 yards on Diego Pounds holding call. That's interesting. Diego Pounds on left tackle. Right side that's number 61. He actually does a great job of getting all the way out. I don't know that I saw the grab. That's Shelly who's coming on the corner blitz. Yeah. So I actually think it's a great job of vision by Pounds. I didn't see the grab. I didn't either. I'm with you on that one. He shoves Shelly to the ground because he's almost 6'6 and 330 pounds. <laughs> May backed up, flips it to Hampton. And Amarian will get it back to where the original line was at the 32. The Quan Douse makes the stop. Look, that's a big deal for Georgia Tech because that's the first stop they've gotten. Now they're aided by the penalties from Carolina, obviously. Look, if you're Georgia Tech and you're Brent Key, hey, like, go ahead and kind of shower your team with some praise here. Like, hey, look, we did it. We can get off the field. And then if you're Mac Brown, I think you got to, you know, basically tell your team, look, you can't beat yourself. Put yourself way behind the down and distance. Dominic Blaylock waits on the punt of Tom McGinnis, who played Aussie Rules football at the age of five. And there's a flag. 
and more procedure calls on Carolina. Before the snap, ball start. Offense, number 31. Five yard penalty, fourth down. So three penalties on this possession will not make the Hall of Fame head coach of the Tar Heels happy. And McGinnis has struggled since coming on for the injured Ben Kiernan, by the way, Tim, in the punt game. Averaging just 35-7. He did have a 50-yarder against Miami on his first day of work. And Blaylock will ask for and make the fair catch near the Georgia Tech 30 yard line. 44 yard punt by McGinnis, way above his average. Don't forget later tonight, the ACC Huddle Crew is here live in Atlanta. They'll give you a full recap of the day in the conference, all the highlights and much more. Kelsey Riggs with EJ Manuel, Eric McLean, Eddie Royal. And our congratulations to Mark Rick, who was inducted. Officially yesterday in Jacksonville, but honored today in the Georgia, Florida Hall of Fame. A rivalry game so big they got a Hall of Fame, Tim. And Mark Rick enters. That's pretty good. Yep. Congrats to Coach Rick. Absolutely. So he'll be back with us next week in Raleigh. And there is Trey Cooley picking up a couple of yards for Georgia Tech, Tyler. Yeah, guys, coming off that last drive, Haynes King was in a ton of pain. He came right to the bench, slammed his helmet on the ground. He met with trainers and head team physician, Dr. Angelo Galante. They were testing out that left hand, pressing on it, asking him to make a fist. But like I said earlier, he is tough. It's going to take a lot for him to get out of this game. First catch of the night for Eric Singleton as Georgia Tech works its way toward midfield on the nice throw of 16 yards. King again with tempo. Here's Singleton another catch. And he'll dig into Carolina territory for three before Lane pushes him out of bounds. And Singleton, true freshman, 20 catches, five touchdowns coming into this football game. He is dangerous. The ball in his hands. And Georgia Tech going fast. Yep, sure are. Rutherford was in motion. They're trying to set the screen here for Singleton. And he will be a couple of yards short of the first down. Marcus Allen. And Eric Singleton Jr. is 10 6 100 time in high school coming out of uh, Alexander High School in Douglasville Georgia it's part of the reason they just threw it to him three times in a row. Yep. And here's a low throw that's grabbed by Rutherford breaks through Malik Rutherford sets sail and a touchdown for Georgia Tech. earlier dangerous with the ball in their hands obviously Rutherford has kind of been the guy on third down good run after the catch but Eric Singleton who caught a pass on three previous plays also comes up with a big block and the point after from Burr is good a much needed score for the Jackets Tim kind of going east to west and finally Rutherford finds the crease much needed is right West they needed to respond and they do it through the air. Ace King not feeling good coming off the last drive responds this drive and Georgia Tech back in it. Here's a 42 yarder from Haynes King. And there'll be no return here by Doc Chapman the freshman so let's visit with Taylor. Yeah, Malik Rutherford plays with a chip on his shoulder. A big reason for that is the size you guys talked about earlier. Just 5'9", 165. When I talked to him on the phone this week, he actually laughed with me. He said, when I first got here, I was actually 140, soaking wet. But Malik embraces it. He says because he was always smaller, he's had to find ways to be different, and that's what really drives him. The fact that he can't just go out there and be average because of his size. So he does everything 10 times harder, which translates to him playing bigger than those measurements. And you saw it right there, guys. Yeah, sounds like we got a guy or two on either squad tonight who is playing with that chip. Here's a Marion Hampton who's off to a terrific start. He'll pick up right at four on first down. Biggers able to get Hampton on the ground. Tim, it feels like Carolina almost to, to kind of keep things in front of them the way they want this. They need to answer this. It does feel that way. And to me, it feels like, look, even on that run, it looked like a Kind of a nothing run that felt like it was stopped. Still a four-yard gain mm -hmm. for Hampton. 
four minutes gone second quarter May loads for Nesbitt caught it in stride Bryson keeps his feet to the 25 to the Georgia Tech 24 yard line and this guy is spectacular Tim last week a big score had one called off by penalty not this one that goes for 46 yeah, I had a coach describe him to me as basically he's like Evan Ingram quick snap here's Hampton with tempo Carolina will pick up three and another look at the made a Nesbitt throw so you're going to get a split safety look here and Drake May is going to start with his eyes to the right he's going to bend it out and then to the middle and it's just vacated in the middle a little stem out like you run into the corner and then get to the middle it's a beautiful route by a tight end who plays like a wide receiver yeah. second down five to go for Carolina trying to answer Georgia Tech's with their third of the night. This is for Copenhaver. Can't flag it down. Well, they took a shot on Jalen King defending the very talented John Copenhaver. Well, they get exactly what they want. They get a wheel route, and that little collision with King, it's actually a nice job of King. It's a collision enough to slow him down. It disrupts the timing because the ball's coming out of May's hand. Right around there and, and Copenhaver not able to get sped up and get to the football. British Brooks comes into the ball game. Carolina's got Copenhaver in the backfield with May like an H back. Nesbitt and Jones near side. Walker to the boundary at the top. They're going to hand it to British Brooks. Big hole inside the 10. First and goal, Carolina. LaMiles Brooks gets British Brooks on the ground and probably saves a touchdown. I mean, look how big this hole is. I mean, it's just, where, where does everyone go? You could drive a truck through there. Yeah. We just hands out, Ken. Yeah. It is interesting. Man. How it's kind of that thing that's out there that he's now trying to put a stop to. And I go back to what Taylor told us at the top, didn't talk to his team, wanted them to kind of run it. Check their vibe. He's got first and goal here with Brooks. British Brooks to the left side and scores for Carolina. Brooks has got his second rushing score of the year, and the Tar Heels do answer the Georgia Tech touchdown to push it back to a two TD advantage. What makes these North Carolina backs so good is we talk about them being, you know, 220 pounds or more, and they pound you inside, but they also have the speed to get to the perimeter. It's British Brooks just outrunning the defense to the pylon three TDs and four first half possessions for Carolina and Burnett's point is good pretty impressive work six plays 75 yards in just ahead of two minutes this is what I mean it's really an inside zone run play he's just able to outrun the Miles Brooks to the pylon and they got really talented running backs here right. for Carolina. You know what Taylor he's a guy who missed all of last season and I think somewhat forgotten coming into this season for Mac Brown. Yeah Wes we talk a ton about Omarion Hampton but Chip Lindsay will tell you his veteran presence British Brooks is a huge thing for this team. You're six now in Chapel Hill especially for Hampton who is talented but still young as a sophomore. So he benefits from Brooks's leadership and he said Chip Lindsay that he brings a kind of calming effect for that room. He's quiet to be honest but in the room he is the alpha they look up to and you saw him leading the way there. Well, second score of the year for Brooks. Carolina back to a two touchdown lead on a Saturday night at Bobby Dodd Stadium. At 21 to 7 and Brent Key's team going to have to answer. Eric Singleton is deep for Georgia Tech. And here is Singleton. He will wave it off and nine yards deep. Georgia Tech from its 25. Don't forget the ACC Fall Championships are here. Sunday afternoon, women's soccer gets underway. First round matches at 6 and 8 Eastern. Then Tuesday at 1 o'clock, field hockey quarterfinals, followed by the semis on Wednesday. Also at 1 o'clock, ACC Network, the home of the ACC Championships. Haynes King's been a little banged up here in this first half. But he's got Haynes with him as the Jack gets back on the attack again, trailing two scores. 
King going to keep it. Got five, got ten, and spun around by Don Chapman after a run of right at 13, 14 yards. Wow. Gritty gutty Haynes King, Tim. Gritty gutty is right, and Chapman is really just ripping at the football. He's trying to get the football out and looked ugly. Here's Haynes on a swing pass, and Jamal Haynes. Four or five yards before Armani Chapman pushes him out of bounds. The Virginia Tech transfer playing in his 57th collegiate game tonight has kind of moved up the depth chart a little bit for uh, defensive coordinator Gene Chizik and Tommy Thigpen and Charlton Warren on that side. Big red zone interception last week. And you do that, you're going to earn more playing time. No question. Here's King, a pump. Now going to take the deep shot for the rookie Singleton comes back cannot make the catch and there's the flag on pass interference against Tayon Holloway another freshman in the Carolina secondary and Singleton shaken up pass interference defense number two 15 yard penalty automatic first down. Say two, but I think they really mean 20. And all the way, it's a double move. Basically, they ran a stop earlier in front of him. They run a double move, and Singleton comes back for the football. Comes down awkwardly. Looks like that left wrist is getting looked at, but yep. been a tough year for Tayon Holloway, who, you know, I would expect Georgia Tech to continue to target. Here's King handing to Haynes. And ball out briefly. The Carolina bench reacted like it was a fumble. It is not, I don't think. No. Just a yard for Haynes on the carry. Boy, Singleton. Mark Smith, the athletic trainer for the Jackets, taking a look at the rookie from Douglasville. And Dante Smith has checked into the ball game to replace Haynes. Here's King on second and nine. Throw to the near side. Avery Boyd the catch ahead of Holloway. Boyd keeps his feet. Good second effort. It'll be third and short. I said a second ago. I think Holloway's the guy that Georgia Tech is going to want to target. Even there, you know, decent coverage. And he's able to carry him towards the first down. Quick snap. Here's Dante Smith. And a Georgia Tech touchdown for Smith. There's a flag across the way here in front of the Carolina bench. Before the snap, ball start on the offense. Not all 11 players were set. It's a five-yard penalty. Third down. Malik Rutherford is reacting as if this is on him for Georgia Tech. It'll negate the touchdown run by Smith. All right, here we go. Watch what happens. I don't think they get set up here, but here's the problem. Here's Holloway. He's running over to cover. He doesn't get lined up correctly. He realizes he's wrong. And so when this ball snapped, he's not in position to make the play. And so the fact that they ruled out a false start ends up being a huge break for Carolina, who wasn't lined up correctly. Yep. Back to the 39. Smith will head to the left side. Trying to keep his feet. Does. And Smith won't go down. He's going to be hard to tackle tonight. Power Eccles drops him at the 35. And. Brent Key looking at fourth down here. And fourth and nine or less. ESPN Analytics says it's a go, and Key's going to burn a timeout with seven minutes to go first half here, Tim. I think based on how these other fourth downs have gone, take a timeout and talk about it. Yep. So Georgia Tech, who has turned it over on downs twice in their first four possessions and thought they had a touchdown a moment ago only to be called by or waved off by a procedure call. Now knowing that Carolina will get the ball to start the second half you probably need to take advantage of this right. Yeah I mean I think so especially with where you are we just go you know back to the penalty they, they're telling us you know that the legal procedures that they weren't all set so you see everyone Kind of running out. The line is set. Go up top. Yeah, and that's the right call because it looks like Avery Boyd 
doesn't get out there and that's really the responsibility of the quarterback when you're going fast like that to make sure that everybody's set now. You almost got to steal a look out there to make sure. Oh yeah I mean you have to it's, I mean listen these receivers especially when you're going fast and you're asking them to play both sides. Right. Look the, the field's 53 and a third you know <laughs> like they got a long way to go and they maybe just ran a route you know the previous play. So that's a brutal break. I would say this to me Rutherford's the guy that you're probably looking to get the football to but they ran a stick concept to open the game. I, I want to be afraid to come back to that pistol set here for King fourth down play fake by King. He wants to take the shot downfield. It is caught. Scyther touchdown Georgia Tech. I think that's why you take a timeout, Wes. Take a timeout, make sure you like the call. Basically, a bunch look to the top, play action, and then you end up getting man coverage off of the play action. It's either who's lined up as the inside guy in the bunch, basically runs a rail route, and Don Chapman's got to run through a bunch of traffic to get through it. Brett Scyther, who transferred from Georgia. Catches his third touchdown pass of the year on his fourth catch. Gotta love the ratio. Touchdown lead for Carolina when we come back to Atlanta. Pair from Georgia and one from Alabama. Here is uh, Caleb Hood on the kick return, and Hood will drag some jackets with him across the. They're gonna give him the 31. Nope, I think it'll be right at the 30. Nonetheless, how about the ratio for Brent Scyther, who makes a terrific catch for the touchdown. Tar Heels back on the field. Don't forget Monday, we've got a special hour of ACC PM. Oh, Pack and Taylor, the release of the new 17-team ACC football scheduling model. Mark and Taylor will discuss Cal, Stanford, and SMU as well as break down all the future matchups. 6 o'clock Eastern, Monday night, right here on ACC Network. Look at you cats breaking news down there, Taylor. There's Amari and Hampton for a yard. Georgia Tech squares around on that to get Hampton on the ground after a yard. Carolina gets the ball here and we'll have it to start the second half, but Georgia Tech's got the momentum. You see Mawala, the linebacker, who sets the defense. For Kevin Shearer, their coordinator. May from the pocket taking the deep shot, looking for Walker. And broken up on the play by Miles Sims. And Tez Walker wanted a flag. Miles Sims at 6 3 in coverage for the Jackets. Yeah, there's a lot of contact kind of at the moment of truth here. I think that's a lot of contact for not looking back at the football. A little bit surprised that that didn't draw a fat flag. Also a little bit surprised how that ball was underthrown. And that's the first target I think to test. Correct. Third down and nine now. Three receivers in Copenhagen on the field. Brooks is the running back. Georgia Tech bringing heat. May stands in the pocket and hits Nesbitt, who caught it, took a stride, and fumbled it. It's going to be ruled incomplete. And it'll bring about fourth down here. Another really good throw by May under some pressure. You see the heat being brought. Perfect throw. Oh, in the middle of reading. That ball's never caught. All right. He oh, can't he's put it trying away. Trying to tuck it. Yep. And Do you want to look at this? Would you want to look at this if you're the coach? I, I don't think so. I think when you see that in full speed, I think it's pretty clear that he never really completes the catch. Carolina's gone three and out, two of their last three possessions. Knuckleball punt from McGinnis. Blaylock going to try and track it down. Now he's got to give up hope. And it will roll out of bounds at the Jackets 15. Touchdown back, Haynes King in Georgia Tech. Here's Haynes King in the Jackets with Dante Smith in the pistol. 
And Smith who's returned to the lineup and right away power Eccles fires through to make the play behind the line. Well Florida State a big win today. Jordan Travis 359 and four Jawar Jordan back in the lineup 163 and two Tim big wins for the Knowles and the cards Carolina trying to stay in pursuit of both here is Singleton the catch on second and 11 it'll be third and about six I think for Georgia Tech on another stop by power Eccles. Yeah, I think that that Louisville score is the one that I think is interesting especially considering they shut Duke out. Yeah. 254 rushing yards too against that Blue Devil defense. Leary in motion feels like a big third down with under five to play first half. King gonna take the shot for Singleton. Caught it. First down. What a catch against Elijah Hussey for the rookie Eric Singleton. Listen, Eric Singleton is the real deal. He's a true freshman. We documented his speed. He's touched the football a lot. They're getting a lot of big plays out of him, and that's on Elijah Hussey, who's the best defensive back that the Tar Heels have. 43 yard throw. Plus territory snap. Here's Dante Smith. And if Luke Benson weren't the way, Smith might have scored. Go back to the throw. It's just a good job of then stacking the defensive back by Singleton to use that speed and then get on top of Huzzy. That's well done. Here's Smith dancing to the 21. Stick lane. The tackle. And Wes, I'm going to say it. When we saw the first two drives from Carolina, I thought, wait, this could be a blowout. Right. And right now for Carolina, I feel like this is danger zone. Here's Smith again. Back in the lineup and fueled up is Dante Smith tonight for Brent Key. Kevin Hester brings him down. It'll be second down and about seven. King is 15 and 19, 205 and two scores here in the first half, Tim. And he's Pretty gonna, sharp. Yeah, he's been. Very sharp, and he's going to need to play well. And he's already been banged up a little bit. And just look at how this second quarter has treated Georgia Tech. It's been pretty good. Trey Cooley's coming to the ball game with King. Here's a quick shot to the perimeter. Rutherford trying to get to the first down mark. Can't. Biggers pushes him out of bounds, but the clock will run as we go toward three minutes to play first half here in Atlanta. And if you're Georgia Tech and you pick up the first down here, slow it down. Cooley stays in the game. That's Rutherford. Here's the throw. Rutherford the catch at the 10. They won't be slowing down. They scored a touchdown. Straight touchdown drives for Georgia Tech. And yes, it's, it's not been complicated. You know, obviously, the, the touchdown pass to Scyther on a fourth down, they, there's a little bit of deception to it. They're just throwing wide receiver bubbles and breaking tackles. The kick is good. Tied at 21. Eight plays, 86 yards, Tim, and 305. Just a little action, just spit it out. It's basically a sweep to a receiver, and it's not complicated. I will say this, you know, is it, I think there's a you know, lack of depth in certain areas for Georgia Tech. They got receivers that can run, and they have receivers that are willing to block when they don't get the football. And so some of this perimeter stuff that we've seen out of Georgia Tech has been really good because of that. Well, Richard Stebbins crunches our numbers up here. First three drives, Georgia Tech had 81 yards. Their last three drives, 230 yards. Incredible. You know, Brent Key is a first-time head coach at his alma mater, Tim. He leads the league in one category, passion, right? We, got, we sat and got an hour of passion yesterday, correct? He loves this program. It's one of the things about coaching at your alma mater. And I think at this point in the football game, we've got to give them credit for how they didn't flinch after being down early. Yep. 
Because it looked like Carolina had thrown that knockout punch at 14 to nothing, didn't it? it I mean, it felt like it. But Martin Hampton was averaging nine yards per carry. Right. I mean, it, you know, it just was one of those things that was wild. And well, time of possession is something that Mac Brown brought up to us in regards to last week's game against Virginia. And time of possession right now, clearly. Georgia Tech's favor. Well, he's got to find out about his football team right here, doesn't he? For sure. Hampton in the game. He had 72 yards on his first eight carries, 15 on his last five. He'll get three here before Micaiah Scott makes the tackle for the Jackets. Tar Heels have all three timeouts. Georgia Tech has two. Carolina would get the ball to start the second half. Final four and first four. You hear coaches talk about it. It's playing out for Carolina. Here's May. Shot throw to Walker. First catch of the night for Tez Walker. Will be his 24th of the year. He had had 17 catches and four touchdowns and 278 yards in his last two games, and that's his first catch. Yeah, and you know, part of that is how they were running the football. Part of that's been Bryson Nesbitt, and you know, they tried to hit him on a go route last possession. I think they're going to continue to come back to him with how Drake May trusts the wide receiver. Play fake to Hampton. Here's May in trouble. Hit as he throws. Hampton the catch. And Amari and Hampton scurries for five, almost six. Harvey the stop for the Jackets. Another quick snap. May. Now dances a little bit and will just throw it out of bounds. And I don't think he's out of the pocket, Wes. Mike Roach and the center judge going to have a discussion. There is no foul for intentional grounding. The quarterback was outside of the box and threw it beyond the line of scrimmage. I mean, there's not a receiver in the area. Drake May's working with his right. He feels some pressure. But, I mean, the left tackles, Diego Pounds, I mean, I mean, he's inside the tackle. Yeah. That would be the definition of the tackle box. So here's Brooks on third down and four. 135 to go, first half. Walker to the top of your screen. May going to run. He's got the first down and gets to the 50. And look, at, that's. I'm going to beat up the officials on, on this, but the reality is. They missed that. You're we able to rush for the first down. Just good job of seeing it by Drake May. It's not a design run, doesn't like what he sees, and just quickly makes a decision to get up the field. Micaiah Scott is the injured Yellow Jacket. You saw him kind of fly through the air there, avoiding May, and he is still down on the turf and being attended to with 128 to go. Carolina will have the first down. In a 21 all ball game. And Drake May is just 8 of 12 for 107 yards. Hampton has 90 of North Carolina's 134 on the ground. Micaiah Scott, you see, may go into the turf. He's trying to avoid any extra tackle here, and I'm not sure he didn't land. Well, he kind of gets kicked. Or he tries to, and then as he jumps over, so that's just a big man yep. way up in the air and at 290 pounds, it's not easy to land soft. Yep. And Brent Key is talking with Dr. John Zerosians, who is the Georgia Tech orthopedic. And so they tend to Micaiah Scott. Big fellow, former Red Elephant from Gainesville, Georgia, transferred in from South Carolina. So Scott is off the field. Midfield now for North Carolina. 
May started the night six for six for 93 yards. He's two of his last five. You know, and somewhat missing. You think about the drop by Nesbitt. Yep. Think about the one to Nesbitt on the over route that was called back because of the hold. And so I think this kind of feels like uphill for Carolina offensively, but part of that's been their own doing. First and ten. Jackets bringing pressure. May steps up, guns for Walker. Caught. Taz Walker inside the 20 of Georgia Tech. Two big catches in the drive, Tim. Yeah, and you see why I've met so much to get him back. Just running the deep over route here. May looks to his left. Coverage kind of a, comes up on the left side, and that's a beautiful throw on the over. 32 yard throw. May going to work again. Steps up in the pocket. He'll run with it. Get to the 10. It'll be first and goal at the 7. In the inside of a minute to go. And that's a busted play. That, that's a run pass option. He doesn't want to give the run, so he looks to throw it, but doesn't like it. And when he doesn't like it, he's got linemen down the field, and he just takes off running. Here's Brooks, and a flag is thrown with 49 seconds left. Now, Carolina's got three timeouts. Was Georgia Tech offside here? Looks like Braylon Oliver's not happy. Substitution infraction on the defense. 12 men on the field. Half the distance to the goal. We play first down. There you go. There were 12 guys out there. And KJ Wallace will come out. But the first and goal now is at the four, three and a half, if you will. Hampton in the ball game with May. Amari and Hampton the carry and bounces into the end zone. Second touchdown of the night for Hampton. Went 17 yards in the first quarter. Rings the bell here from three. And that's getting back to running the football for Carolina. And really, Georgia Tech's got a good defensive call. They got Jalen King. The free safety there to meet Omari and Hampton in the hole, but King goes about 193 pounds and Hampton 220. Eight plays, 72 yards, and 201. Burnett to try and push it to a touchdown advantage. And the kick is good. Well, we said we said at the top Carolina could run the ball tonight. They'd be in good shape. It's tonight's food line food for thought. Well, it was the matchup that we were talking about. Carolina likes to run it. Hampton averaging 110 yards per game coming into this one and really came out swinging. And so already got 19 carries on the night. His most recent one is able to punch into the end zone. And you know, British Brooks obviously been a part of it as well, but this is what I mean about Hampton. There's Jalen King at the line of scrimmage, but look, it's just a bigger back in the hole than your defender, and that is something to cheer for if you're Mac Brown. You know, interesting, Chip Lindsay and Mac Brown both talked about Hampton's patience and his confidence. And they said, ah, you know, the neighborhood of 20. Touches somehow or another, rushing or receiving. Did they mean the first half less? <laughs> were they true. talking the whole game? I think they were talking the whole game. But <laughs> he's on the verge of his fourth 100 yard game. Heck, we saw him go for two and change early in the season. End over end kick will bounce into the end zone. So Georgia Tech will have two timeouts in 45 seconds left. After Carolina gets their fourth touchdown and six first half possessions. And I would say this is interesting territory for the Jackets, but then again, remember what happened two weeks ago. Exactly right. Jamal Haynes is with Haynes King, and now they split. And Haynes will get it on the sweep coming back here to the near side and he will take on a blocker and go out of bounds shy of the first down but does stop the clock with 39 seconds left. And, of course. And, I, and I say this Wes with with two timeouts and the fact that you've had a hard time stopping the Tar Heels. It is not. Hey let's take it into the half. Right. Be aggressive. 
second and one. Straight ahead goes Haynes, and he got the first down. So Georgia Tech with the two timeouts at 33 seconds left. Cedric Gray to tackle. Now the clock starts again. Half minute to go in the half. And King to throw. Rolls to his right. Singleton the target caught it. Out of bounds at the 43 at Carolina. Two weeks ago, you had Christian Leary break it off and head to the end zone. Uh, just the feel that Eric Singleton has when his quarterback's in trouble to go back and work for him is just does not feel like a guy that's a freshman. Feels like a guy that's been playing college football for five years. Look at the numbers for Singleton. Here's King again. Back for Singleton. What a catch! And gets spun out of bounds by Marcus Allen. Another terrific catch by the rookie Singleton. Hey, Wes, I think he, I think he ends up getting himself out of bounds. That's the first one that we saw from Singleton. And then this next one is just good strength at the moment of truth. And then he does an excellent job of getting himself out of bounds knowing the situation. 16 seconds to go, two timeouts. And wait a second now, Carolina's going to burn one of their three here. Boy, what a terrific rookie season for Eric Singleton, and it continues. Now, he had five touchdown catches in his first five college games. He hasn't had one since, but Timmy's still impacting the game for Brent King. I, I'm trying to think if I've seen a more impressive freshman wide receiver in person. Like, that's how impressed I am by this kid. I have an illegal answer, but it doesn't involve television. I just think like for, for, for me, I, I just think that he's got such an amazing feel. He's so fast. And they did have a guy here who was really good as a freshman. I, I said I didn't see him in person. Oh, I, I, understand. I understand that. Yeah. I, I understand that. I'm, yeah. I'm just saying that. Say what, old 21 from Sandy Creek High School, south of town. They made the radio announcer sound really good here. <laughs> That's all I'm telling you. Singleton's got 105 yards. There's Calvin Johnson. You betcha. Here's King. Dances in the pocket. Now tucks away. Trying to get out of bounds. And pretty heady play there, quarterback. Ten it, seconds left. It is, but it runs a lot of time off the right. clock. And so there's part of me that thinks, hey, not there right away. You got to get rid of it. Now, I think you've got to be smart. You have your timeout, okay? So we have two of them, in fact. And so chances are, look, you're going to get one play here. You're going to have to call your timeout, and then you're probably running your field goal team out. Burr's longest field goal, 46 last week against BC. King, King up in the pocket, going to shoot it sideline, and stepping out of bounds with six seconds left is Eric Singleton. Well, I thought that he had I thought an free play. And a free I play. thought he had a free play. Now six seconds left and one timeout as King Brinke burns his second here. This is one of those situations for me, Wes. It's it's risk reward. Because you were on the 17 yard line, you know, the the amount of time it could take a play that develops into the end zone. Because as much as you'd love a throw into the end zone, an opportunity. You don't want time to expire. Correct. So you've got to have a conversation right now with Haynes King, which is, hey, look, maybe they're going to come after us and try to knock us out of field goal range, but this has got to be catch and throw in that environment. If you don't get that look, then we've got to get rid of the football so that we have an opportunity to kick a field goal before time expires. So do you like it in the end zone on the throw here? I think this. And let me say, if you're Carolina, look, I'm rushing three, and I have everybody playing the goal line. Like, you're conceding the field goal. It's not how they're playing this. To me, it's catch and throw to the back corner of the end zone. Here's and King. He's just going to go to the center. side. Yep. Middle I, of the field for Aiden Burr. And now, the crowd doesn't like it, yeah, but that's not listen, bad. This is good football, okay? Now, what I would say is this. If it looked like Singleton had single coverage, Go ahead, catch it, throw it to the back pylon. That should not take more than five seconds. Okay. But you are flirting with getting booed off the field at the end of the half because you don't give yourself an opportunity to kick the field goal. So I think that this is good football. It's going to be right at 40, 41 yards for Aiden Burr. And it's right in the middle of the field because you centered it. 
And Burr on the year, by the way, eight for nine in terms of his field goals. And Wes, if you'd have told Brent Key you could go into the half at 20, 28 21, would he have taken it? Yeah. I think he might have. Would he have taken it at 28 24? Probably so. 40 yard try for Burr. And Mac Brown, knowing that they're not eligible for carryover, burns one of his burns one of his remaining two. Hey, don't forget uh, Monday. It's a special hour of ACC PM. The release of the new 17-team ACC football scheduling model comes out. Mark Packer, Taylor Tannenbaum will discuss the conference editions, not only of Cal, Stanford, and SMU, as well as the breakdown of all the future matchups. 6 p.m. Eastern, Monday night, right here on ACC Network. I want them to do a breakdown of your flight pattern for that, Wes. That's what I want them to do. Okay. What do you think about that? I'm going to tell Taylor. Taylor and Pat huh? can cover that, and maybe some more if they choose to. I think we should document it every week, actually. I think you and I'd have a lot of fun working our way back east from out west on a primetime game. Think about all the late night ACC we can get for you next year. Here's Burr. Final play of the half in Atlanta. 40 yarder to cut it to a four point game. Snap, spot. Kick from Burr is perfect. So Aiden Burr from 40 yards ends the half. Little momentum boost for Brent Key's team. But Carolina, in terms of the receiving work that Georgia Tech has done, Carolina gets the ball to start the second half. There'll be no return for the Tar Heels. Drake May goes from his 25. We'll check with Taylor. Tar Heels ball on the North Carolina 25 yard line. Yeah, guys, you heard Mac Brown heading into the locker room. This thing has turned into a track meet. Loves the way the offense is running the ball and moving it, but defensively, he says they have to make a stop. As for Georgia Tech, finishing has been their issue really all season. When we talked to head coach Brent Key during this week, he emphasized to us the need for his best players to be playing their best ball in the third and fourth quarters. They're going to need to do that tonight, guys. Heels, they have them right where they want them. They're going to need to finish this thing. And Carolina's outscored opponents 78 to 34 in the third quarter and Hampton gets six on first down. So right back to the job one on the worksheet here tonight. And they should because not only are they effective running the football but with how it's gone for the defense for the Tar Heels keeping them off the field is not a bad idea either. So six for Hampton. Puts him on the door of 100 yards, and May will shoot it to him in the backfield, and he's taken down behind the line. Tatum, the linebacker. Tranilius, the junior from Riverdale, Georgia, the stop. And with the momentum that we felt going into halftime, it's a huge third down for Georgia Tech because it would just kind of keep it in their favor if they're able to get a quick three and out. May empties it out here, Tim. Two to the boundary, three to the field. Walker's in a slot right. May looks that way. Here comes the pressure. Sacked for the first time tonight. Kyle Kennard. And I thought May's eyes came down a little quick. Well, they bring pressure to May's left, and I think he feels it a little bit, and I thought he dropped his eyes. You see the pressure from his left. He kind of drops his eyes. It was pretty quick. Had an opportunity to Tez Walker down the field and instead kind of climbs himself into a sack. Good job of Kennard retracing his steps and getting to May. McGinnis will punt it to Dominic Blaylock, who stands at Georgia Tech's 36. What an early win for Brent Key's team. That is blocked. And it will scramble across to the 41, and that's where Georgia Tech will play from. Amari Harvey. Or no, it's Dual Janah. It's the other 18 on the roster. Abdul Janah, the transfer wide receiver from Albany. Or Duquesne, rather. And really, 
just poorly blocked. See the two up backs moving to the right. He just slips it underneath and then does an excellent job of not just plowing into the kicker, trying to get his left hand to the block point. He does that in, what were we saying about momentum, Wes? Wow. Got the ball in the plus 40 now. Yep, 30th block by Georgia Tech since 2013, third most in FBS, and here is King up in the pocket, looping it downfield, and almost, well it was intercepted by Don Chapman. Is it a pick or not? They confer at the 15, incomplete. Haynes King dodges a bullet, Don Chapman within a whisker of his fifth career interception. Dodges a bullet, there's no way this ball should be thrown there and there's they're going to look at this because I think there's a chance that the left foot is in by Chapman if he possesses it right there that left foot is in bounds right but really just a bad decision by King we'll see if he gets the waves over see possession of the football left foot is down it's a heck of a play by Chapman and really the, the first mistake we've seen Haynes King make tonight and it Ends up being a big one. Eight interceptions now for Georgia Tech last four ball games. Now May in the Tar Heels still in a scrap here. Give it to Hampton on first down and sneaks over the first line. But Clayton Powell Lee, Georgia Tech's leading tackler, makes the play. Here's why it's a mistake. You got a post and a deep cross. Well, the safety bites on the deep cross. And if you just look at the post, now I think the post is slow getting there. But if you throw the post, it's a pretty good shot. It's a touchdown. Instead, the ball's thrown into a huge crowd and ended up getting intercepted. Hampton, by the way, over 100 yards. Fourth time this year, sixth time in his career. And here's another procedure call. And Mac Brown here is not happy. Out near the numbers. And Mac is trying to say that it's a Ball shift. Side. Offense number 18. Five-yard penalty, second down. Yeah, Mac Brown is trying to say that they're shifting. And so a lot of times when you shift, especially with a tight end on the line of scrimmage, you know, a guy will step up onto the line of scrimmage. And Mac, you know, clearly not happy about it. And the official basically explaining that there was a flinch. So see that? He steps off, and Nesbitt steps up. And to be honest with you, I think Mac Brown has a pretty strong case. Bay from the pocket and I think his arm got hit as he let it go and I think Micaiah Scott got a hand around Drake May's throwing motion Nate McCollum was the intended receiver incomplete he better get gotten kind of contacted because it's looked pretty unsure yeah. third and ten for Carolina Tar Heels are staring their third three and out in their last four possessions without a conversion here. Here's May from the pocket again. He'll escape and has the first down and then slides down at the 29. That will be enough to convert the play and keep the drive alive. Yeah, and it's, it's another good job of May when he doesn't like it to feel it and and it just kind of opens up for you sometimes as a passer and then that's an area of his game that he's definitely improved upon of not taking unnecessary hits. Georgia Tech with a bunch of guys up around the line. Sneaking Tatum the linebacker up there. And the ball to Hampton trying to get to the right side and Amari and Hampton will push it for five to the 34. LaMiles Brooks, the junior safety from Jacksonville, down to make the play. There's a look at the preseason All-ACC selection. And I, and I would think that North Carolina will continue to try to get to some of these perimeter runs as Georgia Tech has done a better job inside basically since the second quarter on. Second and halfway for Carolina. Hampton again lowered the shoulder and will get the first down. I think his mates helped him. Clayton Powell Lee was the first guy in a white helmet there for Georgia Tech. Powell Lee is a legacy 
in this program. Most versatile piece in the secondary for Brent Key's defense. From Atlanta, played at Westlake High School. His dad, Gary, one of the legendary figures in clean old fashioned hate, the Tech Georgia rivalry at the end of the year from back in 1985. Here's May. Pumps up in the pocket, brought down. It'll be a sack. The yard behind the line. And it'll be second 11. We check with Taylor. Hanging out here on the North Carolina sideline. I just saw Tez Walker come off the field limping heavily. He headed straight to the tent with the trainers. And I'll give you an update when I have more, guys. Wow. Thanks, Taylor. And we talked, Wes, about other receivers stepping up with Tez. Now with Tez out, that's certainly going to need to be the case. Yep. Second and 11, hand to Hampton. Around the corner, there's a hold on Carolina. It's going to be against Willie Lampkin, I believe. Hampton got a run to midfield. Holding offense in the 53. 10-yard penalty, second down. Seventh penalty on Carolina with 55 yards total. And Lampkin is going to be the right guard right here. And he's just going to kind of get beat across his face. And when he does that, that little swim move, he just grabs and knew right away. British Brooks has come in. Here's a look at Tez Walker. We'll keep an eye on nine. May second and long. This is Brooks. And he'll get to the 33. And here comes Walker back on the field. Morris Lockett, the tackle for Georgia Tech on British Brooks. You see, quiet night so far for Walker. He had just. Last week, 11 catches, 146. Comparatively speaking, after his first two full games, he's been dynamite so far. Third and long. Shovel pass. This is Hampton. 40, first down, 45, midfield. Amari and Hampton into Georgia Tech territory at the 37. Some kind of play for Amari and Hampton. And Mawala, the linebacker, is shaken up for Georgia Tech. What a play. Carolina converts the third. The drive is alive next. Now he's got a career long catch on a uh, little shovel pass here, Tim. He does. And originally, Tez Walker at the top of the screen. I thought it was going to be a double up here. Instead, it's a corner blitz and then running out underneath it. When you do that, there's this huge void in the defense. So they run, North Carolina runs this little shovel screen, and everyone's out of the way. You got someone running underneath where the blitz was coming from, and then the blitzer, the corner, taking himself out of the play. And that's why you wonder, how do you convert on third and 18? Yeah. Well, that's how. A little check and checkmate, right? Heck yeah. First and 10 in Georgia Tech territory. Mawala off the field. And here is Drake May and a four point lead for 17th ranked North Carolina. And Hampton will get the carry here and get to the 35. Hard earned three yards. Clayton Powell lead the tackle. Brent Key and Georgia Tech trying to beat Carolina for a third straight year as a ranked team. <laughs> Tenth play is second and seven. May on the perimeter catch made Kamari Morales we've talked about Copenhagen we've certainly talked about Bryson Nesbitt and there's the 245 pound Morales the catch yeah, it's a great point Wes not it seems like the, the receivers are the focal point but man they, they have tight ends that can beat you a bunch of different ways and Hampton converts third and short to the 19 yard line and well, Miles Brooks got out of that tackle, looking at the line judges, saying that Carolina's got a false start. Got a false start. 
First and ten nonetheless at the 19. Red zone chance for Carolina. Up four. Hampton again. And maybe three yards. Andre White the tackle. Did LaMiles Brooks have a case here, Tim? Well, I mean, just look at this. Georgia Tech is, was waiting for the call. So I think that what LaMiles Brooks was doing wasn't yelling at the line job. I think he was yelling at his sideline, get us the call. Get us the call. Yeah. So you see second down. Brooks has come in to replace Hampton. He gets a water break. McCollum in a slot to the left. Walker to the top. May now takes off and has room at the 10, at the 5. Drake May a touchdown. 17 yard run for Drake May. Yes, I think that's probably the third time, kind of in a critical situation, where May is just so quick to make a good decision of when to pull it down. And he's not a running quarterback, but he's an excellent threat as a runner. Working to his left, doesn't like it, feels a little pressure. And then making that quick decision, and then you see the speed. I mean, he just was able to outrun the defense. And He's a passer who sees things well, but Andre White, who was trying to man the middle there, couldn't keep up with him. And the point after is good, so it's an 11-point margin now for Carolina with six minutes to play in the third. Drake May's sixth rushing. It hasn't been the perfect night throwing the football for Drake May, and it's been sloppy at times for the offense, but a good job of sticking with it. And Chip Lindsey, I think, doing an excellent job of being patient with the run. Here's the kick and Leary will watch it go through the end zone. New York Life Drive recap. It was 10 plays for Carolina, probably or 13 plays for Carolina. A little long by their standard and it started with an interception. Yeah, and an outstanding interception at that is Don Chapman able to get that left foot in for the interception. And then on third and 18, just a well-timed screen by Carolina. And then Drake May, just good natural football instincts. Able to run it in for the score and like a pretty big response by the Tar Heels with the way momentum was going after the blocked punt to make that stand and end up with points. Second interception of the year for Chapman. His other one came in the win against Appalachian State. Here's King handing to Jamal Haynes. And look at Haynes slither through for a half dozen on first down. I think that is uh, Cayman Rucker, the butcher, making the tackle. That's a good football player now. Second down and four. Jamal Haynes again. Oh my. Right into the middle and then slung across the first down line by Kevin Hester. I like the way that Jamal Haynes runs. You know, Cedric Gray is running downhill and he just able to put his foot in the ground and get inside of him and pick up the first down. There's a throw on the perimeter and this is uh, Chase Lane who's seeing action for the first time in five games. And Lane the transfer from A&M with Haynes King had three catches and a touchdown against Louisville in game one this year downtown. He's tackled by Marcus Allen second and short or second and ten rather just a short gain on the play. There's King on a straight drop, pressure coming, and a rolling catch by Dylan Leonard is called incomplete at the 47. Now the umpire was right there, best view in the house with coverage as Rucker was pounding through on Haynes King here. Yeah, and he saw it correctly. You, you're right. Rucker is providing some pressure. It's a nice job of King of drifting. Ball's a little low because of that, and really Leonard initially has his hands in the perfect spot to collect that football instead it pops out third in the full 10 for the Jackets King gonna take the deep shot this is Singleton trying to turn back and he had three white shirts around him Armani Chapman Elijah Huzzy and Will Hardy boy and Haynes King really took a lick here from Rucker 
He's able to swing him down. And, you know, King, I think, has done a really nice job of playing on time, you know, which has eliminated negative plays for Georgia Tech. But sometimes you play too quick, which I think partly the case there. You can throw the ball into some trouble. Good looking punt. It will hit inside the 10. Jackets going to try and chase it down, and they do. Carolina going to be pinned deep. Shanahan delivers a beautiful punt. And with 426 to go, it's a 61 yarder for David Shanahan. It's his best of the year. And a quick reminder to you the ACC huddle is headed your way post game tonight from here in Bobby Dodd Stadium. It'll give you a full recap of the day in the conference, all the highlights, and much more. The ACC huddle right here on ACC Network. Uh, EJ Manuel, by the way, was throwing balls with Eddie Royal on the field before the game. I caught one, Tim, right in the finger on the knuckle. I think I'm questionable. I was wondering when you were going to bring that on air. You've been whining in the booth. Oh, this swollen whole up night, a little bit know? here tonight. I'm old. <laughs> I think I'll be able well, to go. In, your, in fairness to you, EJ was throwing missiles out there pregame. Uh, you know, trying to make a play at my age is difficult. Here's May, the deep shot for Walker, overthrown. Worst starting spot tonight for Carolina, obviously, and it's four. By the way, we also congratulate uh, EJ. He won the. Uh, Mini 500 huddle version this morning. I think it means a lot to him. Yeah. Probably. Well, you know, he lost the three point shooting thing at Duke to Eric McLean, so he wins the Mini 500 here today. And a, a photo finish with Eddie Royal, by the way. Here's Hampton sweeping to the left side. And Amari and Hampton's night continues. He got taken down shy of the first down. That Powell Lee in a foot race. We showed the graphic earlier. Third and one. If I'm a betting man, I think they're running it in the middle. Absolutely. Here's Brooks back in. Third and one. Carolina seven of ten on third down, and Brooks has the first down. And still driving toward the 20. And that's where Carolina's going to scrimmage. Taylor, you're around Georgia Tech's bench. Yeah, I loved what I saw from the defense on the sideline after they allowed that last North Carolina touchdown. Instead of hanging their heads, there was a ton of communication first with defensive coordinator Kevin Shearer leading the group. Then amongst the players, specifically in the secondary from Miles Brooks and Miles Sims, Sims just kept repeating, don't worry about it, move on, next play. Mm. Here's May, quick throw on first down, and McCollum could not come up with it, and Jalen King almost had an acrobatic pick. I'll tell you, you know, between last week, a couple missed throws, and even here tonight, Drake May, if I was a little flat on the on the go route he threw to Tez Walker, that's an open throw right there to Nate McCollum, and Drake, I think, has just been a little bit off. Yeah. Carolina's got 119 yards of offense here in the third. Georgia Tech just 10. The Jackets have only run six plays in the third quarter. Carolina's up near 20. Here's British Brooks. Really nice run to the perimeter. And there's a flag thrown on the play behind the run by Brooks. He's tackled at the 30, which would be a first down. There's a lot going on out here for this could potentially be a hold here, I think. Mike Roach. There is no foul for holding on the play. The third down. Well, I'm not sure who they're going to call it on. I, I thought Kamari Morales had a really nice block yeah. getting to the perimeter. I think they may be looking at Ed Montalis, who was pulling around. And the Montalis pulling around right there. Huh. KJ Wallace entangled with Big Ed. Don't often see the holding penalties get picked up though, yeah. once the flag is thrown. So here's third and short, and now Brooks will come out and Hampton comes in. Play clock down to three for oh, May. If Georgia Tech, you should have subbed and forced him to take a timeout. Yeah, here is uh, Amari and Hampton, first down. That's a missed opportunity for Georgia Tech. North Carolina substitutes late. Yeah. Five seconds left on the play clock. 
the officials then will give you a chance as a defense to substitute. And at that point, you can substitute and, in fact, kind of take your time. It would have forced Carolina to either take a timeout or a delay a game. That's right. First and ten. Hampton straight. Bang down. Wow. What contact that was with Powell Lee. I mean, Clayton Powell Lee's listed at 185. That, that's a collision. That's what I'm talking about in the last sequence. It's third and one. Carolina decides to, to sub. They take uh, Brooks out of the game to put Hampton in. Now, at this point, the official's going to stop it. See him run in? Okay, now if you're Georgia Tech, substitute because the play clock's at four. Yeah. Like, that's the game in the game with these offenses if they're going to substitute late. Jackets bring four. May sneaks up the middle again and runs right into Mawala. It'll be third and about three for the first down. I think with the way that Carolina's been running the football, third and three can still be a rundown. So here's Copenhaver and Morales into the game. Tyshawn Chapman, the freshman, and Nesbitt go out. Georgia Tech runs Eddie Kelly in. Big 6 4 edge guy. We're going to hand it to Hampton, trying to get to the perimeter and can't get there. Really nice run pursuit by the Jackets. Braylon Oliver, the Minnesota transfer. Terrific run pursuit here. Terrific run pursuit. You mentioned it. It's Oliver. And then it's also a great job of Miles Sims. See the corner at the top there? Forcing it back inside to all of that pursuit. That's a pretty good stand on third down by Georgia Tech. It's still an 11-point game. That's the final play of the third. So we will go to the fourth. North Carolina 35, Georgia Tech 24. Bring oh, Taylor. With Dominic Blaylock waiting on a punt from Tom McGinnis of Carolina. Pretty good looking punt. Blaylock will signal for and make the fair catch, backing up around the 13 yard line. Well, let's go to our Bo Jangles Big Bo moment from week nine in the ACC. How about let's roll it next Saturday night for the Pack and the Canes? That's a red solo cup moment for Dave Doran today, just like it was two years ago, I guess. Dante Smith on the handoff from King. And he will pick up about four on the play. We showed you this at the top. It is worth a quick check here as we move into the final 15. North Carolina does not play Louisville in the regular season, and Louisville does not play Florida State, Tim. Here is Dante Smith again. First down run out to the 25. Well, which is why that outcome of the Louisville Duke game was such a big deal. And listen, we also said at the top of well, Carolina, great opportunity with everything in front of them to yep. take care of their own business. That's exactly right. Here's Smith, third straight carry, and he'll pick up eight, almost nine. Bo Atkinson, the redshirt freshman in, makes the stop. Yeah, and you know, you think back to a week ago, Carolina played a lot of snaps defensively and faced 54 runs. You just wonder if between last week, this week, they're starting to wear down a little bit just in terms of the volume of snaps they've faced defensively. Yeah. Dante Smith has carried it five straight times here to start this drive. Huzzy to stop there. Well, in Carolina, Maybe tonight, May's numbers, 12 of 19, 172, sacked twice, and a touchdown. Haynes has replaced Smith, by the way, for the Jackets. And King faked the handoff, now shoots it to Leary, and Christian Leary across the midfield line and into Carolina territory, knocked out at the 47. I think that's a run play with a tag to get out of it on a wide receiver screen. And then they miss the handoff, but it's just good awareness of King just spitting it out. And I think the ball thrown behind the line of scrimmage prevents you from having a legal man downfield. And here goes Haynes, a gaping hole. He'll ride to the perimeter, try to keep his feet, and finally shoved out of bounds by Biggers. Good heavens. Jamal Haynes 
for a compact back. He's got a little make you miss in him. First and ten. Jackets moving it through the gearbox here with the tempo and knocked out of bounds near the ten again is Haynes. And this is what I mean about getting worn down. Watch Weston Franklin the center. Just stay with him the whole way. And look at the block that he ends up getting on Power Eccles. You wonder why you end up getting such a big run. I mean, it's getting up to the second level, covering guys up like that. And Here's Haynes again, following blockers. And he will break the five. And it is first and goal, Georgia Tech. 12-19 to go in a moving clock. Biggers makes the save on the, on the run by Haynes. I think Carolina's tired, Wes. Absolutely. Quick snap. Here's Haynes again, trying to take white shirts with him and does for the touchdown. Eight runs, one pass. That's what I'm saying, I think they faced 54 rushes a week ago, and Brent Key wants to go for two. Which obviously Kicking an extra point and being down four really doesn't do you any good. But faced 54 runs last week against Virginia. We would said it earlier, 30 tackles between Cedric Gray and Power Eccles. I just think there's an element of just getting worn down. And Brent Key wants the play clock reset. And he's, they're going to do that for him. Yep. Two point try now. Tim told you to cut it to three. King and this is Rutherford next two points. Jackets and heels are at it again. Jamal Haynes. Fifth touchdown of the year. Two point tag three point game. Touchdown. Dante Smith just to his right and Trey Cooley to his left. Those have been the three principal ball carriers tonight for Georgia Tech. And this ball got skipped along the ground, picked up by uh, Doc Chapman, the freshman. He's headed to the far side, and this youngster can fly. Tyshawn Chapman is tackled in plus territory at the 38 yard line. So it's a great job of Chapman just hitting it hard. A ton of speed, picks up a couple good blocks, and in the open field, you can see that speed. Nick Tech fortunate that he able to get him down. He returned one kick last week for 15 yards against Virginia. That was 52. And now Amari and Hampton and Carolina back to work. Tim, you want to see him run it here now? I mean, I, I th just think that, look, you're not in four minute offense mode. There's a lot of football left to play, but look, you've been pounding. The football with how you've been running it, and then yeah, I think you've got to stick with it, especially with good field position. By the way, Carolina running the ball tonight. Started this drive with three more minutes of possession time tonight through three quarters than it did all last week against Virginia Tech, or Virginia rather, in the loss to the Wahoos. So second and seven after Hampton got three. Sometimes in this world where we talk about how fast teams go, got to remember to gear down too. Seeing that tonight. Here's May from the pocket, hit as he throws, looking for Chapman. Touchdown, Carolina. My goodness, the rookie had the kick return and now gets his first career touchdown catch. You know, we've talked to the coaches about this receiver group and Chapman has felt like he's been on the fringe, the outside looking in but Chapman's just going to come inside and run through the middle here and the safeties are going to go essentially spread out with Tez Walker and because they do that it's Chapman's speed which we saw on the kickoff once again just run through the middle of the field two plays 38 yards Carolina in the end zone tries to push it back to 10 and does 42 32 now what an answer by Mike Brown's team Doc Chapman from Virginia Beach. Going to be inducted in December officially as a 
National Football Foundation and College Hall of Famer. And he will be the fourth Georgia Tech football coach to join the National Football Foundation and College Hall of Fame. A remarkable career as a head coach at Georgia Southern, where he won FCS national titles at Navy, where he dominated the Commander in Chiefs trophy. And he took Georgia Tech to two Orange Bowls and was three time ACC Coach of the Year in 11 years in Atlanta. And you see, of Georgia Tech's proud history in football that dates back <laughs> a long time, they have 14 players that are College Football Hall of Famers and now four head coaches that are College Football Hall of Famers. The head coach number there, that's, that's an impressive number. And they are Dodd Heisman. And William Alexander. Pistol set for Georgia Tech off its 25 here now, trailing 10 again. And Dante Smith gets it going. Boy, a nice job of kind of crab crawling for a couple of yards to keep his feet and pick up five. Yeah, I originally thought he was down. I think yeah. you're. And Georgia Tech right over the football. Smith's got 70 yards on 13 carries, and look out! It's a foot race with Don Chapman, and Dante Smith is going to. Is it a touchdown? Yes! Smith does he get in does he get in Tim does the elbow hit or the shoulder the shoulders a touchdown so I think the elbow hits but where's the football there when the elbow go. hits there you go you mentioned the crab crawl on first down. Well, second down. That ball might be over the white. I think when that elbow is down, you know, because of the angle that we're looking at it. I mean, there's I, I haven't seen enough so far to say they would overturn it. But right when the elbow hits down, that's when he's down. But I think part of that football looks like it's crossed the plane. Yeah. Not. Do we see the elbow now? After further review, the ruling on the field stands. It's a touchdown. And you know what? Brent Key and Dante Smith with a word there. And he's come back in the lineup tonight and exploded, Tim. Remember, I said he had not played since <laughs> South Carolina State. He had 13 carries on the season and. They were excited to have him back, and you can see why. And the kick is good from Burr. Back to a three-point game. And boy, we bought ourselves a good one here tonight, haven't we? Yeah, and things were really well blocked, and I think that Cedric Gray just overruns this. Watch, excuse me, Power Eccles just overruns this. As he overruns it, there's no one there for Smith. Smith, I think the the break tackles kind of back, but plenty of speed to get in the end zone. And I said it last drive, Wes. I feel like it's the case. I think Carolina's gassed on defense. And I think that's why. And, and listen, I think Brent Key and Buster Faulkner know it, which is why they've continued to just go so fast. We've got 506 yards combined rushing in the ball game between these two teams. 255 for Carolina, 251 for Georgia Tech. And Drake May, it's your serve again. Doc Chapman, who had Carolina's longest kick return of the year, is deep. And he's going to let that go half year, halfway back. 
By the way, the Carolina only had 49 yards all year in kickoff returns prior to Chapman's wrong one a moment ago. Don't forget ACC Fall Championships are upon us. Starts tomorrow. Women's soccer gets underway. First round matches at 6 and 8 Eastern. Then over to field hockey Tuesday at 1 o'clock. Quarterfinals followed by the semis on Wednesday. It's terrific, terrific action on ACC Network, the home of ACC Championships. You see Cayman Rucker there, a guy who plays hard, and I just think these guys, between last week, you mentioned time of possession, Carolina defensively running out of steam. May on first down to throw. Shoots it down the field. J.J. Jones says he's got it at the 42, and he does. 16-yard throw there in the first down. Yeah, just a stop route, and May does a good job of hanging with him. Jones sells the vertical, throws on the brakes, and good anticipation by Drake May. Chip Lindsay, the offensive coordinator, matching wits tonight with his old friend Kevin Shearer, who is Georgia Tech's defensive coordinator. Ten minutes to go in the game. Brooks and British will pick up right at about six on first down. Well, Miles Brooks tackles British Brooks. You know, we had seen Carolina move fast throughout this football game. Yeah. I think this is Mac Brown a little bit slowing his team down, probably with an awareness of what his defense is going through. So second down and four. And British Brooks stays in the game. Gonna fake the handoff to Walker. May wants to take the shot. There's Nesbitt caught at the 30. Bryson spins inside the 25 and a Tar Heel first down at the 24. It's a concept they've run a lot tonight. Post with a deep cross. It's Nesbitt on the deep cross. And it's all this eye candy in the backfield with the fake to Tez Walker that helps bring Nesbitt. Here's British Brooks. Bounces into traffic and will be shut down there. Jalen King from Laverne, Tennessee, just outside of Nashville, the tackle. Been impressed with the fight that Georgia Tech's defense has put up in terms of stopping this run. And listen, it's been a lot of yards tonight, but. 1,047 is a big I number. Mean, a big number. <laughs> Hampton has returned on second down and nine. And right into the stack and arms of Kyle Kennard goes Amarian Hampton. Eddie Kelly big 97 in there too and now third and nine in a three point game. Brent Key's team hanging tough. But there's a big difference in a first down or a field goal try here, Tim, with 7.58 to play. A huge difference, especially with the way that they've been defending the run. And for my money, it's working Nesbitt in the middle of the field. May now going to run with it, going to head for the far side, and he got shoved out of bounds by Tatum. The linebacker, he was well short of the first down. Heady play by Tatum to stay kind of in the neighborhood, it looked like. Yeah, and it's a nice job. You know, Tatum is out in space, not somewhere where he typically plays, but that's where British Brooks is lined up, so he's out there with him, and it's a nice job of, of seeing it all and then re reacting to Drake May's scramble. 39-yard try for Burnett. His longest 48. Kick is away. It's no good. From 39. Tugged it just a hair left. Ricky pretty calm. And Mac Brown knows his team is still up three, but here are the Jackets at the 21 to start the drive with an even seven to play. And wow, Haynes King kept it, faked it 
to Dante Smith, and here goes King. Inside the Carolina 30. yards for the Texan. Here's Dante Smith. He'll get five. He'll get eight. That's a first down. He got more than that. Clipped it off pretty good. He got 11. Look at this. Third snap. Tim there in the red zone. Yeah. And Carolina wants a timeout. Well, Biggers goes down. Biggers went down, yeah. And I think for all intents and purposes, Wes, it was a for a timeout. And listen, you look back at the first down play. Oh, and the officials are saying, look, he's getting himself off the field. Go back to the first down play. Cayman Rucker's about to run this down from behind. I think Haynes King just decided to pull it himself and then follow him. We heard about his speed. And it was an excellent job of him using his speed. Going fast is certainly an advantage for Georgia Tech right now with how just out of gas it seems Carolina is defensively. Three point game, six to play. Dante Smith to the right side, and he'll be knocked out of bounds at the three. First and goal, Georgia Tech. Chapman and Allen get to him before he can score. The Georgia Tech's just moving Carolina off the ball. Now they're even slow getting lined up. Here's Smith again, straight into the stack. Georgia Tech now with 328 on the ground. That's what I mean, just moving them. I mean, just basically getting all kinds of movement. Jordan Williams at right tackle does an excellent job of sealing the edge. There's Smith, and what a play by Evans. Goodness, Desmond Evans. And it's third and goal. I think you got it right now. Third and goal from the five with the way they've been around the football. I understand third and five may be more of a known passing situation. But if I have a boot play that I like, yeah. good hard run action with the sellout on the run, I would try to get to it right now. That's Rutherford in motion. Snap to King. Carolina trying to get there. King to his right. Looks back. Now comes set. Got to do something. Throws for the end zone. It's caught. Is it a touchdown? They're talking it over. Scyther trying for his second score of the night. Long discussion. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. Touchdown on the field. Mike Roach, the referee. They want to confirm whether they want to look at this or not. Left foot down, Tim. Really on the field, the receiver was forced out of bounds. He established himself back in bounds for a completed pass for a touchdown. That play is under further review. Okay, we got a lot to disseminate here. Correct. That's a good call, Wes. There's a lot. So what the official is saying is that. Others pushed out of bounds. Correct. Then reestablishes himself. And then you're dealing with this here, which is he catches the football. Does that left foot ever touch back down him? Right there with and the I'm ball. Not, and I'm not sure that it does. Now it's ruled a touchdown. Correct. So there's got to be enough information that it does that you say, hey, no, it did not touch the ground. It's hard to tell from that angle and from this angle. 
Let's see if that left foot hits back on the ground. I think it may. And I also think what they're looking is further back in the play. I think they're saying that he was maybe out of bounds. Sure. And so obviously if you go out of the field of play, you have to be forced out of bounds, then reestablish yourself in order to be the first person to touch the football. So that's why the conversation between the two officials was so long. They were trying to establish two pieces. One, did he get back in bounds? And two, did he get a foot down on the catch? Well, and three, even on top of that, was he forced out of bounds before he came back in bounds, or did he take himself out of bounds? So here he is right here. Let's keep an eye on him because he's going to end up working to the corner. He sees his quarterback in trouble, he retraces. Chapman then pushes him out of bounds. That's the first part of it. He gets forced out of bounds. So now he reestablishes completely. That part of it is fine. Now it does come down to, does that left foot contact the ground as he's possessing it? And the reality of it is this, it's ruled a touchdown, and I don't know that we've seen anything to say that that left foot does not touch the ground conclusively. Here's the other part about this. He's wearing a black cleat tonight and a blue end zone, Tim. And sometimes that could be the difference, right? You can't tell. Hey, and right honestly, just look at some of these. And, and right here, like it feels like that toe is grabbing some of the field turf. And look, I, this touch, this is a touchdown in stands to me. After further review, the one on the field stands, and it's a chest out. Georgia Tech has scored three touchdowns in seven minutes again here in the fourth quarter. Fourth touchdown pass of the night for King ties his career high. It's the third time this year. The kick is good. It is a four. And how about how about your man Scyther tonight? Two catches, two touchdowns. I don't think I've ever seen a quarter by quarter scoring like that in my lifetime. <laughs> Goes along with other things for the first time you've seen in your lifetime this year with me. And I will say this, like a pretty good environment here. Turnout by the student section and some energy in this stadium tonight as either just make it happen. They should be excited too with over 1,100 yards of offense witnessed in this building. Carolina off its 25. Amarian Hampton's got 147 yards tonight on 28 carries. Here's May to his right. He'll shoot it to Copenhaver. It's Eford, the linebacker, who tries to make the play, but boy, John Copenhaver turns the corner and rolls upfield for a pickup of 22. And another tight end for Carolina making plays. And Here's May to work quickly. He'll hold the football here, looking now, and tried to dial it for Jones. A lot of contact with Amari Harvey as the ball arrived, but no flag. It'll be second and 10. I think Drake gets kind of caught in between. Hey, I'm going to escape outside the pocket, and then seeing Jones pop free and was really off balance in the pocket. And Mrs. Jones. Walker to the bottom of your screen. They'll give it to Hampton again. And Amari and Hampton knocked out of midfield. It'll be third down and right at seven, Tim. Jalen King shoved him out. And Wes, I mean, let's just, like with how the defense has looked for Carolina, inside four minutes, I don't think you can punt this football. Even with all three of your timeouts, this is two down territory territory for Carolina. Jackets rush four. May up in the pocket, off balance, keeps his feet, throws back to the middle of the field. It's caught. Morales, it'll be a first down. Hampton, rather, rather. It'll be a first down if it stands. This might be a hold. Thrown in the neighborhood of a hold. Holding offense 
from the 53. 10 yard penalty. Hold that. It's a remarkable play by Drake May. He's getting contact in the pocket to make that throw, and then great catch by Hampton. But, oh, yeah, it's just a, it's a, it's a wrestling move by Lampkin, who was a high school wrestler. Bit of a chokehold. Would have been a first down, by the way, on the throw to Hampton. Yeah, now third and forever. Are you still in two down territory? I mean, listen, I don't know that you're going to get the ball back based on how your defense looked. You got to find a way to get a big chunk on third down. Georgia Tech with three on the line, brings three. May with time. Trying to buy it, shoots it downfield. Walker first down at the 30. Jarred loose and recovered by the Jackets, K.J. Wallace. Walker, I think, is the injured Tar Heel. Wallace made the recovery after the hit. And I think I think it's Harvey coming off of right. a receiver to the outside and Tez Walker because so much happened in terms of just like knowing where everybody is. Drake May gets a great pocket and he moves and he buys time and Tez decides to work for him across the field. He just doesn't see the defender coming off of Copenhaver as Amari Harvey and he just gets him right in the midsection. Wow. I don't know if there's any way to know. I mean, the ball is even in his right hand, but he just gets hit so hard from Harvey. KJ Wallace gets the recovery. Tez Walker is still down. It, it is the first turnover of the night on North Carolina. May is over. And Tez Walker having to be helped from the field. We hope that youngster will be okay. They'll check him out and Carolina sees Georgia Tech after its first turnover the Jackets from the 24 the Tar Heels with three timeouts and Dante Smith the first carry. So Smith in the run game and there's the first of the three Carolina timeouts with 248 and I would say this you know you're, you're Brent Key and your quarterback has played great tonight. I am I'm running the football and I'm forcing Carolina to take all the timeouts and if you have to punt you have to punt but at least you're punting and giving the ball back to Carolina without any timeouts and you've done some and by the way they would need to score a touchdown it's not just to kick a field goal. right and you've done some things in your ability to run the ball to create some throwing lanes along those lines with the way you line up right no doubt about it and listen you might get you know a pretty good effort in terms of a stop defending the run by Carolina but if you're Georgia Tech you don't give them a chance by throwing an incompletion I'm going to hand it to Dante Smith no Haynes King's going to keep it here to the near side he'll be a couple of yards shy maybe one of the first down and Don Chapman makes the tackle third and one Carolina called their second time out and it's going to be a yard and a half for Haynes King here and it's you know a zone read Rucker squeezes down again they arc block Leonard the tight end who gets a piece of Hardy and Don Chapman is able to wrestle King down before he picks up the first down and about to see the biggest play of the game so far on this third and one. Yep. We had a big one on a Carolina third down. Now we're going to see a big one for Georgia Tech. And look, it's a long one. If I'm Brent Key and Buster Falker, I'm running the football. Like, giving. Carolina the football back with a timeout allows them if there's a sack they can use a timeout things like that sure not having a timeout for as an offense and having to go the length of the field and score a touchdown with no timeouts is significantly more difficult.
Jackets are 6 of 11 on third down. Is Brent Key going to call a timeout? Does not. They hand the ball. That is Smith, and he got to the 35, and that's a first down with 2.35 to play. Mac Brown has one timeout. This is what I mean about run the football. It wasn't pretty. It's basically meet you in the hole with Cayman Rucker, who's played a lot of snaps tonight. And Smith, who's a good physical back, is able to fall forward. On a night they honor Paul Johnson, they've run it like a Paul Johnson team, Tim, in some respect. Yeah, and now in this situation, if you're Haynes King, make sure you're snapping the football with no more than two seconds left on the play clock. There's the snap with two. Here's Dante Smith out to the 40 to run a five on first down. And Carolina uses their last timeout. Okay, Tim, so 151 to go. Carolina will be out of timeouts. It'll be second down and six for Georgia Tech. So in third down will be about you know just over a minute left on yep. third down. And then you'll run a play on third down. It'll be about 20 seconds or so left, you know, when it gets to fourth down. I mean, you're gonna give the football back if you don't get a first down, right? With you know less than 20 seconds most likely in the football game. Yep. Now obviously you pick up a first down the game's over. So you're not in a situation where you know you can have the ball on fourth down and there's four seconds left and you can drop back, throw the ball deep down the field out of bounds to make sure the clock runs out. So you're obviously trying to pick up the first down. There's absolutely no reason to throw the football should be a run on second down, a run on third down, and if Carolina gets the football back, it's going to be with virtually no time left and no timeouts. Yep. Don't forget, right after we're done here, Kelsey Riggs anchors ACC huddle, field side at Bobby Dodd tonight here in Atlanta. All the day's action in week nine of the ACC and live guest analysis and more. Second down. King will keep it and Rucker slings him around three yards shy of the first down with 145 to go. The clock starts on the play. There are 35 seconds to snap. So 105 would be where he's got to pull the trigger. You see the ACC race. North Carolina, despite the loss of Virginia, had it in front of them tonight. They've seen Georgia Tech score 21 points in this fourth quarter if they get a first down here on third and three the Jackets are going to be the ranked Carolina team for the third straight year. And I think what Brent Key is going to do is let this wind all the way down and take a timeout before getting the delay to really talk about what run they like on third and three. Yeah. And Wes as you look at those standing you'd have to think they're despite. 377 yards of offense from Tony Elliott's team today. So here we are. Third and three. That's Smith sidecar left of Kane. Hand is to Smith and Dante Smith has sealed another Georgia Tech win over North Carolina. How about it? Understanding the situation as well, Wes breaks through there, picks up the first down. And it's a surrender situation. Doesn't try to keep running for the score. Ball could get popped out, goes down, and Georgia Tech going to be able to take a knee and end this one. Dante Smith, 178 yards on 22 carries including a 70 yard touchdown run in the fourth quarter and Haynes King takes a knee and the Jackets for the third straight year have beaten ranked Carolina and Brent Keith guides Georgia Tech to their ninth win in the last 25 games against North Carolina.